Throwing ball is not something you should try to fight because it's a fight that you can't win. So you got to know when to start accepting the fact that it's going away. I noticed some stuff was happening to my house. So I said, instead of fighting, I was just going to get with it. It is impossible that offenses should not come to you. Something someone is going to say is going to offend you. You got to learn how to deal with it because not being offended is unachievable. It's not doable. There are no exemptions from it. It's going to happen to you. It's not possible to escape it. Most people are governed by their emotions. They're having a hard experience in a head fight. You will never win a battle if you're having a hard experience in a head fight. I just want to remind y'all that none of us should be on the receiving end of what people feel like doing, acting, saying, and being. A lot of us are running around playing victim as if we have nothing to do with any of our choices, our friends, our surroundings, our environment. Most of us are running around losing sleep at night, stressed, depressed, frustrated when those are your friends. Are you so busy managing the emotional relationships that you have that you don't have the energy to think the thoughts you need to think to go where you need to go? It's possible for you to be delivered and still oppressed. Who am I? Most people haven't answered that question yet. And that's why they're still dressing like other people and acting like other people and fixing their hair like other people and following styles and following fashions and going over hip and what? They don't know who they are. They're trying to find themselves. Who am I? Asking that central question in one's life. Looking at your strengths and your weaknesses. Getting some evaluation, determining what it is you want out of life. Self-approval. Proving yourself to do the things that you like to do and going after the dreams that you like to go after. And we know when we don't approve of our dreams because of the fact that they stay up in our minds. We don't act on them. We come up with a variety of excuses on why we're not going into action. If you don't love you, if you don't like you, if you don't believe in you, if you're not experiencing the right emotions about you, you bring all those emotions with you to these places you go. And learning the strategies of being happy and fulfilled prior to having all these material things will serve you because I have so many friends that have accomplished all the material things in their life and those things made them happy short term but they're living an unfulfilled destination here on earth emotional resilience I think this is one of the things that if you can develop this um, again it doesn't mean that you have some superpower to ignore your emotions but you understand facts over feelings you understand just because you feel something even though your feeling is real, doesn't make it right. It doesn't mean that, okay, if I feel like I'm not enough, then, then I'm not enough. And emotional resilience just simply, emotions come up and you don't cave to your emotions. What are you doing now? You're still here breathing. That means you've got some more to give. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter about where you are, doesn't matter about what you have. Life is about growing, it's about being productive, it's about stretching, it's about challenging yourself. So you start looking around and decide, hey, hey, wh what else do I want to do? What, what got me here? What worked? What did not work? What do I need to do to repeat so that I can get the same kind of results in other areas of my life? True strength, it doesn't show when you feel like doing something. True strength is shown when you don't feel like doing it and you still show up and do it. Like that's when true character is revealed, right? The hard times reveal the true character, not great times. I would start my day off. I would construct my day with being uncomfortable. Why? Because when I conquer that, when I push through that, I know I have no choice but to grow. If you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room. You want to get around the right people. You want to be in a room with people that you can learn from, that you can grow from, people that enhance you, people that inspire you, people that bring out the greatness in you. You want to be around people who compliment you, people who empower you. It is your own discipline that acts as the magic catalyst to give substance and depth to your ambition, to achieve your own plans and dreams, to have what you want to have. 
and to become what you want to become. Your consistent self-discipline is the magic catalyst. Anything worthwhile in your life, you're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to fight for it. You're not just going to wake up one morning with a six pack. If you want good health, you want to feel better, you're going to have to fight for your health. So there's always the battle between, is this the best use of my time or is this just something that's okay to do? You know, when you're trying to grow yourself, when you're trying to stretch yourself, improve yourself, there's always one thing you can do yourself and that's that an obstacle is going to show up. You know, to tell yourself like you're not good enough. What are you thinking about? Get out of here. What I'm saying to you is that, is that there's something else in you. There's a version of you that already has everything you want, everything you need. There's a version of you that can pick yourself up Get out there and live again. You just have to discover your override. Feelings will lead us astray. Feelings can get us into trouble. And throughout life, you're going to have plenty of opportunities to lose your temper and say things you regret. You're going to get up some mornings and feel like being depressed, feel like going around in a bad mood. See, the feelings are always going to be there. But we've got to learn how to follow wisdom and do what we know is right and not just follow our feelings around. What you believe uh, will dictate your thoughts on a moment by moment basis. And so your beliefs dictate your thoughts, dictate your emotions, dictate your actions, which produce your results. And your results, when you look at them, then just reinforce the original belief. And so we're caught in that construct, right? But the linchpin is the belief system. So many people give up and quit because they have a dream planted by God in their heart, but then comes the nightmare. And unless you can endure, and unless you can endure hell's nightmare, you'll never experience heaven's dream for your life. Don't wait for things to deteriorate so drastically that someone else must impose discipline into your life. How could you possibly explain the fact that someone else thought more of you than you thought of yourself when you would have been content to let success go to someone else who cared more about themselves? Your life, my life, the life of each one of us is going to serve as either a warning or an example. But the problem today is too many people are not willing to pay the price to walk in victory. They don't want to suffer. They just want to take the easy way out. The easiest thing to do is to just let our flesh have its way. But friends, there is no such thing as fast food maturity. If you want to grow up, it's going to take some hard work. It's hard to love people when they're not being nice to us. It's hard to keep a good attitude and be patient when nothing's going your way. How long? Are you going to react? That's the real question. Because if you keep that emotional reaction going on for an extended period of time, sooner or later it'll become your identity. And then people say, why are you so bitter? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you suffering so much? And your brain, in that emotion, you're in the emotion. And you're going to say, I'm this way because of that past experience. When you can see that every link in the chain will eventually lead you to the things you want most out of life, then you won't grow discouraged or fearful or impatient with today. When you can see where you're going through visual chain thinking, even on the toughest days, you'll keep building your ambition by knowing where you're going. Part of this visual chain thinking is built when you decide on your direction. When you can see where you're going to end up before you get there, on the outside, people don't look broken. You don't see bruises and you don't see scratches. People don't walk around in a big cast. So you can't tell with the naked eye. The problem is that there's a malfunction on the inside. They can't interpret the blessings of God. They can't receive compliments. They can't receive joy from friends. The second part is, it's like you try to cry out for help, but every time you try to speak up, you can't make a connection.
attitude. It is our attitude toward life which will determine life's attitude toward us. We shape our own lives, and the shapes of them will be determined by our attitudes. If we take the attitude that we cannot do something, we generally will not do it. An attitude of failure, and we're whipped before we start. Then what we receive from life, what we accomplish or fail to accomplish, is due in large measure to our overall attitude. You don't have to settle for the life that you now have. There is more. But in order to have more, you got to be hungry because things are stacked against you. It's the reason that only 1% control the wealth of the world. But there are few people that break through. You know why? They're like me. You got to be hungry. How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can be anything but a dog. A tree can be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again. And you will get a breakthrough. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery. And you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life. Your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself. Because if you don't, I guarantee you that you will make a settlement. And most people have. In addition to working on yourself, and as you work on yourself, you feel good about yourself. And as you feel better about yourself, you treat yourself differently. Develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valued. Develop a health plan. A plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you live you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. But you're worth it doing it again and again and again. I have lost 22 pounds several times. The next thing is, as you take care of yourself, the next key is, key is the motivation, the self-motivation. You want to live life with energy and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. See, in life, you're either saying hello or goodbye. You either own the way or end the way. Leave dead people alone. You want to smile. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. But you watch some of the faces around you every day. And I tell you, some of these faces, they will put you in a depressed state of mind. So you want to avoid these kind of faces. The next thing that is a key to self-motivation is that you've got to ask yourself, what do I want out of life? What do you want out of life? What do you want out of a job? What do you want out of a career? What do you want out of a relationship? What do you want? What gives you your life? What the hell do you know when you got it? What will make you happy? You need 
need to know. You need to start asking yourself some questions. What do I really, really, truly want? And you need to be exact about that. Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How do you know when you got it? Zero in on it. Be exact. Be specific. And as you do that, that will stimulate that superconscious mind or the reticular activating system of your mind that will begin to find those things, to identify with it. And once you begin to determine that which you want, take the time to write it down. Don't just think about it. Write it down. That is a subjective process that engages the subconscious mind. Write it down. Once you write it down, read it three times a day. Morning, noon, and night. Why is that important? Because what it will do, it will cause you to focus. It will cause you to concentrate. When that other conversation is going on telling you what you cannot do, telling you all of the impossibilities and all of the obstacles, your concentrating will begin to create a larger vision within yourself and you start looking for and seeing some new opportunities. You start creating some openings for yourself. you begin to read that every day, every day, day in and day out, that will make you focus. That will discipline your thinking. And you'll get all kind of creative ideas. As I talk to you right now, being involved in this immersion process, you're going to create some openings for yourself. You're going to get some ideas. You're going to feel your adrenaline flowing and you're going to think about something, some idea you had. You say, I want to go back and I'm going to look at that again from a different vantage point. Not from the level of the problem of the obstacles that I encountered, but from a higher vantage point. Because what you will begin to see and to know, as I have talked to the higher consciousness within you, that you are powerful, that you are a miracle worker. And that inner conversation has conditioned you to believe that you're not. And as you begin to discover the truth of who you are, whatever challenge that you're facing in life, and if you're living, you're facing some challenge, you begin to know that you're powerful and that you're America man. So as you begin to write down exactly what it is that you want, read it every day. I have had it with parking my car in my cousin's garage because I know the best way to get back on your feet is to miss two car payments. I had it living like that. I had it robbing Peter to pay Paul. I had it borrowing people, borrowing money from people. I had it living like a cringing animal. When you don't have any money, it runs your blood pressure up. You hear me? I had it. Poverty sucks. Take, make no mistake about it. I was working for a guy that I was miserable. And life is too short and too unpredictable doing something you don't want to do. Even if you can't do, do it all at one time. It, it's worth it, ladies and gentlemen, to be involved in doing just a little bit of it. Do just a little bit of your dream. What if the unthinkable happens to you? What if, God forbid, I wake up tomorrow morning and I open my mouth and no sound comes out? What if, where you're working now, they have a downsizing or merger? and you're out. What if, what if, what if? What if the unthinkable happens to you? I wish we had a time to talk about strategic planning that you can do for your future. But let me take you to the next level. Can, give me, I, I know I'm running close. Can you give me just about three more minutes? Can I do this up here? Let me do this up here. If you want, if you want to get your goal, here's something else. Is, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to decide to be unstoppable. Unstoppable. If you want to reach your goal, see, most people, ladies and gentlemen, are stoppable. Most people, all you have to do is tell them no. All you have to do is make it inconvenient for them. All you have to do is make it difficult for them and they're stuck. See, when you go to get your goal, don't think that all you have to do is think positive and everything's going to work out hokey dokey for you. When you go to get your goal, you are sending a telegram to Murphy's Law to visit you personally. Now, if you're asking the question, well, who's Murphy? Don't worry. You will know Murphy real soon. 
you will experience the storms of life. I do a whole seminar how to survive the storms of life. And if you say, what's a storm? Don't worry. Because in life, you either in a storm or just left one or headed toward one. Yeah, how many of you know about the storms of life? Raise your hand. Okay, well, see, ladies and gentlemen, people who have not reached their goals, they got caught in the storm and they gave up and they went back. Or they decided that the price wasn't worth it. See, they didn't know that that goes with it. That goes with the territory. That when you want to grow, when you want to achieve, when you want to experience more, all hell will break loose.